derive the dimensions of the following physical quantities derive the dimensions of the following physical quantities number 1 velocity number 1 velocity velocity v is displacement by time where uh, s is the displacement s is the displacement therefore dimension of v is equal dimension of s divided by dimension of t equal uh, dimension of l dimension t dimension v equal lt inverse hence uh, we can say that dimension of velocity v equal lt inverse now dimension of acceleration acceleration a is equal to v minus u divided by t therefore dimension of acceleration a is equal to dimension of v minus u divided by dimension of t equal since we know that uh, dimension of change in velocity v minus u is equal to dimension of u that is final velocity is equal dimension of initial velocity u this is the dimension of change in velocity and that will be equal to dimensions of uh, final velocity v and initial velocity u unit of change in velocity v minus u is meter second inverse unit of final velocity v is meter second inverse and unit of initial velocity u is also meter second inverse that's why dimensions of v minus u will be equal to dimension of v and uh, which will be equal to dimension of initial velocity u so here in place of dimension of v minus u we can write dimension of v by dimension of t equal dimension of lt inverse divided by t so finally we get the dimension of acceleration a as lt to the power minus 2 lt to the power minus 2 dimension of a is equal to under third bracket lt to the power minus 2 this is the dimensions of acceleration a number 3 linear momentum we have to find the dimensions of linear momentum we have to find the dimensions of linear momentum linear momentum is given by small p small p is the linear momentum which is the product of mass and velocity p equal mv Therefore, dimension of small p equal dimensions of small m, that means mass into dimension of velocity small v, equal capital M LT inverse. Therefore, dimension of small p equal dimension m LT to the power minus 1. That is the dimension of linear momentum. Then, fourth quantity is force. Force F is uh, equal to m dot a, where m is the mass and a is acceleration. Dimension of F equal dimension of small m into dimension of A equal capital M into dimension L T inverse L T to the power minus 2. Therefore, dimension F equal M L T to the power minus 2. Dimension M L T to the power minus 2. So, we get the dimensions of force as F equal dimensions M L T to the power minus 2 m l t to the power minus 2 that is the dimensions of force now work done work done w is the product of force and displacement w equal f dot s where f is the force and s is the displacement occurred under the action of uh, the force therefore dimension of w equal dimension of f dot dimension of s is equal m l t to the power minus 2 that is the dimensions of force into uh, capital L. Therefore, dimension of W equal ML square T to the power minus 2. So, we get the dimension of work done as dimension of W equal ML square T to the power minus 2. Number 6 quantity that is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy of a body moving with velocity v is ek equal 1 by 2 mv square where m is the mass, v is the linear velocity. Now we know that dimension of a constant number c is 1 means dimensionless. That means a constant is generally a dimensionless quantity. Therefore dimension ek equal dimension half into dimension of small m into dimension of v square equal 
dimension of half is 1, dimension of capital small m is capital M, dimension of v that means velocity is lt inverse whole square. So finally we get ml square t to the power minus 2. We get the dimension of kinetic energy ek as ml square t to the power minus 2. Ek <coughs> equal dimensions of ek equal ml square t to the power minus 2. So here half is a constant number and it has no dimension that's why dimension of half can be written as 1. Number 7th quantity. So conclusions or extra knowledge as dimensions of ek is equal to dimension of dim, dimensions of w that means kinetic energy and work done have the same dimensions then we have to find the dimensions of uh, next physical quantity that is change in gravitational potential energy next physical quantity is change in gravitational potential energy due to change in height from earth surface change in gravitational potential energy change in gravitational potential energy change in gravitational potential energy is denoted by e subscript p which is equal to mgh which is equal to mgh therefore dimensions of ep we have to find dimensions of EP where small g is the acceleration due to gravity which has the value 9.8 meter per second square and dimension of small g or dimensions of acceleration due to gravity is L t to the power minus 2. That is dimension of EP equal dimension of small m that means dimension of mass into dimension of small g into dimension of h equal dimension of capital M. Now the dimension of acceleration due to gravity small g is L t to the power minus 2. Small g is one type of acceleration and small g is actually acceleration due to gravity which has a value 9.8 meter per second square and it has the dimension L t to the power minus 2 which is same as uh, the dimensions of general acceleration. Now in place of small m we can write capital M in place of small g we can write L t to the power minus 2 into L. We get the dimensions of potential energy or change in gravitational potential energy EP as m l square t to the power minus 2. Next quantity is number 8 uh, quantity is power. Power is uh, the rate of doing work. P is equal to W by small t where W is the work done and small t is the time in which work is done. Therefore dimension of capital P is equal to dimension of W by dimension of small t equal ml square t to the power minus 2 divided by t. So we get the dimensions of power p equal ml square t to the power minus 3. ml square t to the power minus 3. That is the dimension of power. Number 9 is moment of inertia. Number 9 is moment of inertia which, which plays the same role in rotational motion as uh, played by the mass in linear motion. Moment of inertia is the product of mass and square of perpendicular distance of the body from axis of rotation. This is a point mass uh, small m which is at a perpendicular distance small r from the axis of rotation. The vertical line is the axis of rotation. The body rotates about this axis of rotation with a certain angular velocity and moment of inertia i is the product of mass and square of perpendicular distance of the body from the axis of rotation. Product of mass and square of distance therefore i equal m r square therefore dimensions of i equal dimension of small m dimension of small m dimensions of small dimensions of i equal dimension of small m into dimension of r square equal dimension capital M dimension L square. So finally we get the dimensions of moment of inertia i is equal m L square dimensions of moment of inertia i is equal m L square dimensions of i is equal m L square i is the moment of inertia. Number 10 quantity is pressure. Pressure P is equal to force acting per unit area that is F by A. 
f by a therefore dimensions of what will be the expression of dimension of pressure dimension of p equal what and uh, we can prove that dimension of pressure p will be m1 l uh, to the power minus 1 t to the power minus 2 that is uh, equal dimension of a divided by dimension of a equal dimension ml t to the power minus 2 divided by l square so finally we get the dimension of pressure as it should be this pressure p is small p or p in uh, lower case uh, that is m1 l inverse t to the power minus 2 that is the pressure dimensions of pressure in addition to this uh, quantity we have to know the value of one atmospheric pressure what is the value of one atmospheric pressure that is 0 0.76 meter mercury column pressure or pressure exerted by a mercury column of height 0 0.76 meter which has the value 1.013 into 10 to the power 5 newton per meter square what atmospheric pressure will be equal to one atmospheric pressure one atm pressure is equal to 1.013 1.013 into 10 to the power 5 newton per meter square that is the value of one atmospheric pressure that is the value of one atmospheric pressure next quantity number 11 that is density mass density density is rho which is mass by volume small m by capital v where capital v is the volume of a body capital v is a volume capital v is a volume of a body where v is the volume of the body therefore dimensions of rho is equal to dimension of small m dimensions of small m divided by dimension of v is equal to dimension capital m divided by and here dimension of volume v is equal to dimension of which one will be correct dimension of volume l l square or l cube it should be uh, l cube that means dimensions of volume v capital v is equal to l cube so in place of dimension of v what we can write l cube therefore we get uh, the dimensions of mass density rho is m l to the power minus 3 dimensions of mass density rho is equal to m l to the power minus 3 that is the dimensions of density additional information in connection with uh, mass density we have to know the density of density of water which is denoted by rho w rho subscript w which is 10 cube kg per meter cube what will be the value of density of water how much kg per meter cube it should be thousand that is 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube that means density of water rho w is equal to 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube that means 1000 kg per meter cube then we have to know the density of density of mercury density of mercury is denoted by rho subscript hg rho hg rho hg is equal 13.6 times of density of water that means 13.6 into 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube then density of air density of air which is rho a is equal to 1.293 1.293 kg per meter cube which is very small 1.293 kg per meter cube density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube then we have to know the density of earth density of the substance of earth rho e is equal to 5.5 .5 into 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube 5.5 .5 into 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube so you have to memorize uh, the values of density of water mercury air and earth density of water is 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube density of uh, water is rho w which is 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube density of mercury is 13.6 into 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube density of air, air is 1.293 kg per meter cube and density of earth is 5.5 into 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube.
नेक्स्ट फिजिकल क्वांटिटी इज फ्रिक्वेंसी नेक्स्ट फिजिकल क्वांटिटी इज फ्रिक्वेंसी फ्रिक्वेंसी न्यू इक्वल वन बाय टी वेर टी इज द टाइम पीरियड फ्रिक्वेंसी न्यू इज द नंबर ऑफ ऑसिलेशन कॉम्प्लीटेड नंबर ऑफ ऑसिलेशन कॉम्प्लीटेड इन वन सेकेंड दैट इज दैट इज इक्वल टू रेसिप प्रोकल ऑफ टाइम पीरियड कैपिटल टी T is a capital T or T in upper case is the time period. Therefore, dimensions of new equal dimensions of one divided by dimension of capital T. Capital T is the time period. So finally, we get the dimension of new, which is equal to dimensions of T to the power minus one T inverse. Therefore, dimensions of frequency is uh, equal to T inverse dimensions T inverse. Now you have to know the uh, different units of frequency. Different units of frequency. Unit of frequency is uh, there are uh, various frequency. Uh, number one is hertz. Number one or unit of frequency is hertz. Unit of frequency is hertz, which is denoted by capital H Z small Z. Number two unit is second inverse. Another unit of frequency is second inverse under bracket. We can write S inverse. Number three is number three is uh, RPS. Number four will be RPM. Then CPS. Number three unit of frequency is what you know uh, uh, revolutions per second or uh, rotations per second. Rotations per second. RPS. Then RPM and last unit of frequency is CPS. Now one hertz is equal one second inverse, which is equal one CPS, mm -hmm. and also one RPM is equal to one RPM is equal to one revolutions per minute. That means one revolution divided by minute. That is. Equal to one by sixty RPS. Therefore, one RPM is equal to one by sixty RPS. Is equal to one by sixty hertz. Number thirteen uh, quantity physical quantity is velocity gradient. Velocity gradient. Velocity gradient is equal to delta v by delta x. That means change in velocity by change in displacement velocity gradient equal delta v divided by delta x delta small v is uh, the change in velocity delta v is the change in velocity when displacement changes by delta x delta v is the change in velocity of a body and delta x is uh, the change in distance or displacement change in distance so this is the rate of change of velocity with respect to distance that's uh, therefore uh, the dimension of velocity gradient is equal to dimension of delta v divided by dimension of delta x equal to dimension lt inverse because uh, dimension of change in velocity is equivalent to dimension of velocity lt inverse divided by l we get uh, the dimensions of velocity gradient as T inverse. We get the dimensions of velocity gradient as T inverse. T to the power minus one T inverse. That is the dimensions of velocity gradient. Since uh, dimensions of delta v is equivalent to dimension of v or final velocity, which is equal to L T inverse. So uh, we know that uh, unit of if we consider the units, then for Unit of four meter per second minus three meter per second. That is one meter per second. That means uh, the unit of four meter per second minus three meter per second is meter per second. Meter per second. Hence, we get the dimensions of velocity gradient as t inverse or t to the power minus one. Similarly, if we consider the unit. Units of difference in force, a difference in two forces. That means unit of four newton minus three newton. 
that is uh, what will be the unit of 4 newton minus 3 newton that will be newton or joule obviously the unit of difference of two forces 4 newton and 3 newton we know that 4 newton minus 3 newton is a force that's why the unit of 4 newton minus 3 newton will be newton uh, that means if we consider the units of difference in frequency that will be newton Similarly, if we write dimensions of delta V or dimensions of change in velocity, that is dimension of V minus U is equal to and uh, what will be the dimension of delta V? L, LT or LT inverse? It should be LT inverse. Dimensions of change in velocity delta V will be LT inverse. Dimensions of delta V will be same as dimensions of V minus U which will be equal to LT inverse. Therefore, dimensions of velocity gradient will be same as the dimensions of frequency. Both have the dimensions as T inverse. Dimensions of velocity gradient will be equal to dimensions of frequency, which is equal to T to the power minus 1. Now we have to find uh, the dimensions of pressure gradient. You have to find the dimensions of pressure gradient. Pressure gradient is uh, equal to change in pressure divided by change in distance. Pressure gradient equal delta P that is change in pressure divided by delta X that is rate of change in pressure with respect to distance is the pressure gradient where delta P is the the pressure is the change in pressure gradient. Delta P is the change in pressure change in pressure delta p is the change in pressure and delta x is the change in displacement or distance where delta x is the change in distance so therefore dimensions of pressure gradient is equal to dimensions of uh, what will be the dimensions of pressure gradient here dimensions of pressure gradient will be m l to the power minus 2 l to the power minus 2 t to the power minus 2 so, which is equal to dimensions of delta P divided by del uh, dimensions of delta X. In place of dimension of delta P, we can write down the dimension of pressure that is ML, L, ML inverse T to the power minus 2 divided by L. And finally, we get the dimensions of pressure gradient as ML to the power minus 2 T to the power minus 2. Dimensions of pressure gradient will be equal to m l to the power minus 2 t to the power minus 2. We get the dimensions of pressure gradient as m l to the power minus 2 t to the power minus 2. Next quantity is uh, 15th quantity that is angle. We can draw uh, uh, an arc which subtains at an angle theta at its center we can denote two radii this is the center of the arc o is the center of the arc and here a b is arc which has length l linear uh, length is l and this arc a b subtends at an angle theta at the center o r is the two radii r are the two radii of uh, this arc at its center so theta is the angle subtended by the arc which is equal to length of arc divided by radius length of arc divided by radius which is equal to therefore theta is equal to l by r <coughs> theta is equal to l by r we get the dimensions of theta as what will be the dimension of theta theta is the ratio of same type of physical quantity quantities that is a dimension of length divided by dimension of r or radius that will be dimensionless therefore dimension of angle theta will be one will be one so how to prove that is dimension of l divided by dimension of r that is dimension of capital l divided by dimension of capital l which is one so under bracket we can write uh, this is a dimensionless quantity Dimensions theta is equal to 1 means it is a dimensionless quantity. Unit of theta or angle is a radian 
and uh, a next angle or another angle of theta is degree but in a mathematical equation theta the value of theta in radian is used degree is not used so radian the value of angle theta in radian is used we know the that uh, pi radian is equal to 180 degree therefore 1 degree is equal to pi by 180 radian 1 degree is equal pi by 180 radian 1 degree is equal pi by 180 radian where pi is equal to 3.14 which is 22 by 7 